Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. IRS reminder for many employers and self-employed people deferred social security tax payments due December 31st. You know, I have a plan with this whole social security payment thing. I mean, like, why can't we just defer the social security tax payments until like retirement age? The point at which the government is supposed to graciously return our money. But instead of us paying like the social security tax at that point, and then the government giving us the money back in the form of social security benefits, we just call it a wash at that time, you know? And then, and then that way we don't have to take the money out of the economy. And you could still, you could still bloat the federal government by hiring a bunch of bureaucrats to track like the increases in the social security IOU accounts and then netting them out against the decreases when people reach the retirement age for the social security benefit payments. So, so like for those politicians that are connected, but not quite so much so that they can kind of get their kid a job running like a, a foreign energy company, they could have still at least get them a job increasing and decreasing the social security accounts. And, th and there wouldn't really be any money involved. So you, you lessen the danger of them like stealing the money and then spending it on like filming strange sexual rituals while wearing women's clothes, which were acquired from suitcases they stole from like airport luggage areas or something, you know? I feel like that would be good. But anyway, it's just an idea. First a joke. I'm sick of hearing that every cloud has a silver lining. I mean, it's not true, dang it. Like, honestly, I, like, it makes me feel like I'm talking to some kind of perpetual liar or something. Like Dr. Fauci. I mean, think about it. Like, if a cloud was encased in silver, it'd fall out of the sky due to being heavy. I mean, it, if every cloud had a silver lining, we wouldn't be wandering around in dank, dark mines to search for the stuff. Instead, we just take a nice hot air balloon up so we could mine some silver cloud linings while drinking champagne and admiring the sunset. Noting while we're enjoying the scenery where that rainbow touches down so we could just go pick up a nice pot of gold when we land our, you know, airship balloon ship. Clouds have a silver lining. Yeah, and zero COVID policy is a good idea. I mean, tell us another one, why don't you? IR 2022-220, December 14th, 2022, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service today reminded employers and self-employed individuals that chose to defer paying part of their 2020 Social Security tax liability that their second annual installment of the deferred amount is due on December 31st, 2022. As part of the COVID relief provided during 2020, employers could choose to put off paying the employer's share of Social Security tax liability, which is 6.2% of wages. So clearly many businesses uh, couldn't do their normal businesses at the time of COVID. They were basically shut down to some degree, but the government still wanted the people to not decrease the employment of individuals. So one of the ways to incentivize that was to reduce the payroll taxes. But instead of just reducing them outright, they had the deferral related to them. And so now the Piper's piping home saying pay the Piper wants to be paid at this point in time is what I'm trying uh, to say. So this can be a kind of a confusing process because the payroll is a bit confusing. In any case, if you talk about the Social Security, that's going to have an employer and an employee portion to it. And they said that the employer portion could be, you know, deferred. And so that's the kind of that's the part of it that we're basically uh, getting into at this point in time. So self-employed individuals could also choose to defer a similar amount of their self-employment tax. So what kind of happens with the self-employed individuals, it's kind of interesting because every time they try to tweak something for the payroll for the corporations, uh, then they kind of have to do a similar thing for the self-employment individuals because they're treating the self-employed individuals, at least for payroll taxes, as if the, the, the sole proprietor is an employee of their own business, meaning they're paying both the Social Security and Medicare for the employer and employee taxes on the net income. So every time they do something 
on one side, the corporate side for employee taxes, they kind of have to mirror it or they should to kind of be fair on the self-employed side. So now you've got that situation with it as well. So generally, and that would be the self-employment tax, right? So generally half of the deferral was due on December 31st, 2021. The other half is due on December 31st, 2022. Earlier this year, the IRS sent reminder notices to affected employers and self-employed individuals. The agency noted, however, that those affected are still required to make the payment on time, even if they did not receive a notice. So the piper is getting insistent about paying the piper. So how to repay the deferred taxes? Employers and individuals have several options for making this payment. Deferral payments can, can, uh, can made through electronic federal tax payment system. That's the EFTPS direct pay. There's a link to that here. Buy direct card, credit card, or digital wallet, or with a check or money order. No matter which payment option is chosen, it must be made separ uh, separately from other tax payments and deposits. So you don't want to be mixing up. You got to tell the IRS, why are you making the payment? Otherwise you confuse the IRS and they'll apply it to the wrong thing. They might refund it back to you and then charge you interest because you didn't pay them when you did pay them, but then they gave it back to you because they applied it to the wrong thing. So you got to be, you got to be specific. So this will ensure that it is credited properly and will help avoid follow-up bills or notices. So we've got the EFTPS. Employers and individuals can make the deferral payment through the enrollment in the electronic federal tax payment system. There's a link to that here. It's a free service available from the Treasury Department so that they have this free service that allows you to pay them. They're gracious enough to not charge you for paying them. That's nice. So on the tax type selection screen, choose deferred social security tax and then change the date to the applicable tax period, the calendar quarter 2020 for which tax was deferred. So make sure you have the proper period that you're applying the tax to or else once again, the IRS will get confused and they'll apply it to the wrong place. They may refund it and then say that you didn't pay them when you did pay them, but they applied it to the wrong place and then charge you penalties and interest. So be careful. Visit the EFTPS.gov or call 800-555-4477 or 800-733-4829. I won't say those a hundred times because there'll be a link to this in the description if you want to check it out yourself. You got the direct pay. Alternatively, self-employed individual taxpayers can choose direct pay to pay directly from a checking or savings account. This service is available free only on direct pay with bank account. There's a link to that here once again. They graciously provide this free option to pay them. So when you give them money, they're not going to smack you across the face with a penalty at the same time, which is nice. So select the quote balance due in quote reason for payment and apply the payment to the 2020 tax year where the payment was deferred. Direct pay is not available to pay employment taxes, however. Then you've got the debit card, credit card, or digital wallet. If paying with a credit card, debit card, or digital wallet, select quote, installment agreement, end quote, apply the payment to the 2020 tax year where the payment was deferred. Note that the IRS does not charge a fee for this service, but the authorized third-party payment processor do. So in other words, if you pay with a credit card, you still might get a fee, but the IRS is saying, hey, look, it's not us that's doing it. It's your credit card. So you might want to pay one of those other ways if you want to avoid the little fee on it. So then you can visit irs.gov forward slash payment for details. There's a link to that here. Check or money order. So make any check or money order payable to the United States Treasury, not the IRS, the United States Treasury, por favor, if you please. For more information on where to mail payments, you can see the instructions for Form 941. There's a link to that here. There's links to all the other payment options and stuff that I said there was a link to. There's phone numbers that you can call. All that stuff's here. And there'll be a link to this in the description.